Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss one of the drugs, galoxetine. Breast cancer is one of the condition which is widely observed in both premenopausal as well as postmenopausal women. The proliferation of breast tissue is mainly due to the enhanced activity of estrogens. Many drugs are used to treat the breast cancer. And among them, few of the drugs are directly inhibiting the estrogenic activity, thereby they reduce the breast cancer. For instance, we have drugs like tamoxifen, which can be used in the treatment of breast cancer, both in premenopausal as well as postmenopausal women. Another drug with similar suffix is the raloxifene, belonging to the same category, and chromifene is the another drug within this category. But chromophene is mainly intended to induce the ovulation in the anovulatory women. Similarly, raloxifene can be used in the treatment of breast cancer in postmenopausal women only. So even these three drugs are belong to the same category, they are having the different clinical indications. Tamoxifen can be used in the treatment of breast cancer in both premenopausal as well as postmenopausal women, whereas raloxifene is only useful in the postmenopausal women. And chromophene is completely different. It can be used to induce the ovulation in anovulatory women. Even these three drugs are having the different clinical indications, but all these three drugs belong to the same category that is SERM, selective estrogen receptor modulators. So today in this video, we are going to discuss about the raloxifene, which is a selective estrogen receptor modulator. Now, this raloxifene can be used in the treatment of breast cancer, which is invasive in nature. That means it is highly spreading. In such conditions, raloxifene can be used to reduce the risk of invasive breast cancer. But the main clinical indication of this drug is in the treatment of osteoporosis in postmenopausal women. Since raloxifene can act as both agonist as well as antagonist on estrogen receptors. It can be used in the treatment of osteoporosis as well as the management of invasive breast cancer in postmenopausal women. So today in this video we are going to see how this drug acts, what is its chemical nature, what are the important precautions, side effects, doses, all these things we will discuss in this video. First of all, let us see the chemical nature of this drug. So this is the structure of raloxifene. Here we can observe the benzothiophene moiety with some side chains. Let us give the naming for the structure. This benzothiophene is attached with a ketone group at the third position. So we can write this as 1 dash benzothiophene 3i. And at the sixth position, it is having the hydroxy group, so 6 hydroxy. And at the second position, it is having the para hydroxy phenyl group, so 2 dash 4 hydroxy phenyl. This entire group is attached immediately to a ketone group. Now, to this ketone, on the other side, we can observe phenyl group. So, we can write this as phenyl. And this phenyl group is having a ethoxy chain at the fourth position. So, 4 dash ethoxy. And this ethoxy group is attached with a piperidine ring system at the second carbon. So, 2 dash piperidine 1 i. That is the complete name of raloxifene. So, raloxifene is a SERM, which is a benzothiophene derivative. Now let us see how this drug acts. Raloxifene can act as agonist as well as antagonist. It acts as an agonist on bones so that it can reduce the osteoporosis by increase the estrogenic activity. It also acts as an antagonist on the breast tissue. Now raloxifene can act on the bones which increase the osteoblast activity and reduce the osteoblast activity. Estrogen receptors are present within the cytoplasm which are attached with the one of the protein HSP90, heat shock protein 90. These receptors are going to target the DNA within the nucleus. So, raloxifene can bind to the estrogen receptors which are activated and undergo conformational change. Immediately, they are going to be internalized within the nucleus where they are undergoing the time radiation. And then they are going to interact with the DNA at a particular region which is response to the raloxifene. So, it can be called as raloxifene response to element. So, this DNA region is going to be interacted with the estrogen receptors leading to gene transcription and this gene transcription results in the development of mRNA. This mRNA results in the protein synthesis. So, finally, 
Galoxifen can induce the protein synthesis, which reduces the osteoporosis. Can induce the expression of alkaline phosphatase enzyme. It can also increase the expression of osteocalcin. Even it can increase the collagen synthesis. All these proteins can increase the osteoblast activity and they can reduce the osteoblast activity. So, this reduces the osteoporosis in postmenopausal women. Similarly, raloxifene can act as an antagonist on the estrogen receptors within the breast tissue, thereby can reduce the proliferation and reduce the invasiveness of breast cancer in postmenopausal women. Now, what is the precautions of this drug? One of the important precautions of raloxifene is that this drug can increase the risk of deep vein thrombosis. It is also called as DVT or deep vein thrombosis. Is one of the important limitation of raloxifene, which should be carefully monitored because this DVT may lead to pulmonary embolism. So, in the patients with any risk of thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, this drug should be carefully given. And particularly, this effect can be observed after four months of the treatment. So, any development of deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism should be carefully checked with raloxifene after four months of the treatment. Few of the factors can also increase the deep vein thrombosis. For instance, in the patients with post surgical recovery, they are highly immobilized and they stay most of the time on the bed, which further increase the thrombotic events. So, in such conditions, raloxifene can be further increase the deep vein thrombosis. That's why during the surgery, raloxifene treatment should be stopped in order to reduce the risk of severe deep vein thrombosis. Similarly, the premenopausal women, raloxifene is somewhat ineffective. That's why this drug is not indicated for the treatment of osteoporosis in premenopausal women as well as in the treatment of breast cancer in premenopausal women. So, this drug is only effective in postmenopausal women. Raloxifene is having the estrogenic activity, and estrogen supplements are also increasing the estrogenic activity. But these two drugs should not be combined because this combination is unsafe. As raloxifene is having both agonist as well as antagonist activity on the estrogens. So, this combination is unsafe and they should not be combined. Similarly, this drug can increase the risk of stroke in the patients. It can also increase the embolism and thrombus formation. That's why this drug should not be given to the patients with any cardiovascular disease. In such patients, this drug should not be given and it should not be used to prevent any cardiovascular disease. Similarly, raloxifene is not indicated in the pregnant woman. So, pregnant women or women liable to pregnant, this raloxifene should not be given as it produces some fetal toxicity. And this drug is only intended for the women and it is not used in the men. Now, let us see the side effects of raloxifene. This drug produces hot flashes which is commonly observed with many of the hormonal supplements. So, it can produce some leg cramps arthralgia, joint pain. It can also produce peripheral edema, swelling of legs can be observed and excessive sweating can be observed because of again estrogenic activity. It can also produce flu-like symptoms resulting in rhinitis, sinusitis. All these side effects are observed with raloxifene. How it is given? This drug is available as a tablet and it can be given at a dose of 60 mg given as once day. This drug can be taken with food or without food. It is not related with any food intake. At any time, it can be taken as 60 mg once a daily tablet. So, that's about this drug, raloxifene, which is a SERM selective estrogen receptor modulator. This drug can be used in the treatment of osteoporosis as well as to reduce the risk of invasive breast cancer in postmenopausal women. But this drug is not effective in the premenopausal women. And this drug should be carefully given because it can increase the deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. And it can precipitate care of the cardiovascular events. That's why, on long term therapy, this drug should be carefully given. Any development of thrombosis should be thoroughly checked in the patients. And it can produce both estrogenic as well as anti estrogenic activities. On the bones, it produces estrogenic activity. On the breast tissue, it produces anti estrogenic activity. So, that's about this drug, Raloxifene. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel.
share this video with your friends, watch your comments, comments box. Thank you for watching this video.